Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono white aggro deck featuring Elspeth, Sun's Nemesis, one of the new planeswalkers from Theros Beyond Death, for mana for a 5 loyalty planeswalker that can generate 2 1 1 tokens with the minus 2 ability. The minus 1 can give up to 2 creatures plus 2 plus 1 until end of turn, so a nice way to pump up our creatures. And then we don't really talk about the minus 3 ability. And then later in the game we can also escape Elspeth for 6 mana by exiling 4 other cards from our graveyard, so in the very grindy match we might get to play Elspeth multiple times, but uh, Elspeth is just a nice curve topper for an otherwise a very low curve aggressive deck. As you can see we've got a ton of 1-drops in the deck, so ideally we get to play 1-drop on turn 1 and 2 1-drops on turn 2, so we've got a nice early board presence. And then how do we leverage that early board presence? Well, Venerated Loxodon is a good way to do it. 5 mana for a 4-4 creature with Convoke, saying when the Loxodon enters the battlefield, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature that convoked it, so we can tap any number of creatures we control to help pay for the Loxodon's mana cost. And very often in this deck we can tap 4 or 5 creatures to help us pay for the Loxodon, so we essentially get to play it for free, and then all our creatures will get a plus 1 plus 1 counter, so the Loxodon can potentially add 9 power and toughness to the board without having to invest any mana, so it can to very efficient turns where we first empty your hand full of uh, cheap creatures and then use the same creatures that we just played to convoke the Loxodon since they don't suffer from uh, summoning sickness when it comes to convoking. So just a very powerful and explosive card in this deck. Then another way to pump up our creatures is with Heraldic Banner naming white, giving all our creatures plus one plus zero, oh, and we can also tap Banner for mana right away, so we can potentially play an additional one drop, and when we have this many one drops that's uh, often a play that will happen. And then we also have two copies of Unbreakable Formation, which does double duty against control decks, since we can potentially keep up formation for three mana to make our creatures indestructible in response to a sweeper effect. But we more often than not will use the addendum during our turn to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature and also give them vigilance, so we can get in for a massive amount of damage without fearing any repercussions. And then we'll take a look at the rest of the deck. So at one mana we've got four copies of Fairy Guide Mother, one mana for a 1-1 flyer. Can also use the adventure later in the game to give a creature plus two plus one and flying until end of turn. Then we have four copies of Giant Killer as another adventure creature. Can first use the adventure for three mana to destroy target creature with power four or greater. But the creature half is totally fine by itself as a one mana one two that for two mana can tap target creature. And we've got another tapper creature in the form of Lorun Enforcer, one mana for a one two that for one mana can tap target creature with convert mana cost 2 or greater, so it's a little bit more efficient to use ability on the Enforcer, but it does have more limitations. And as you may have noticed, our deck doesn't have any dedicated removal spells, so having access to 8 creatures that can tap down opposing blockers is very useful if we need to get past a large blocker from the opponent. And then we've got 4 copies of Healer's Hawk as well as a 1 mana 1 1 lifelinking flyer, and the full playset of Loyal Pegasus as a 1 mana 2 1 flyer that can't attack or block alone. So we usually don't want to play the Pegasus on turn 1 unless it's our only option, since we won't be able to attack with it on turn 2, but it does make for a nice turn 2 play alongside another 1 drop. And then we also have the full playset of Erase the Alarm to make two 1 1 tokens at instant speed. And making tokens plays very well alongside cards like Heraldic Banner and Loxodon, especially, and potentially can lead to some interesting scenarios where the opponent attacks into your open mana and you can use the tokens to ambush opposing creatures, which can uh, definitely come up. And then we also have two copies of Eidolon of Obstruction, which is not a key card in the deck, but it's just a decent 2 drop as a 2 mana 2 1 first striker that makes loyalty abilities of planeswalkers your opponents control one more expensive to activate. So if we play this turn 2, the opponent can bounce this with a Teferi on turn 3, so it does potentially slow those Planeswalkers down quite a bit. And a first striking creature, especially for pumping it with banners, Loxodons and Elspeth's minus 1 ability, is uh, quite relevant since it will usually be able to attack into any opposing blocker without fearing to lose it. And then our mana base is very straightforward, 16 basic planes and 4 castle Ardenvale, which also plays very nicely alongside Heraldic Banner, since the banner not only helps us generate more mana to use the castle in the first place, but then turns our tokens into 2 ones, which are a lot more threatening. And then of course the banner can also help us ramp into an Elspeth, since with uh, 20 lands we don't necessarily expect to play Elspeth on curve, but the banner helps with that as well. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty decent hand, especially if we draw a third land. So probably gonna go one drop into Eidolon, and then if we draw a third land we can go banner into another one drop. 
And that way we also save the adventure on Giant Killer in case that uh, comes in handy. Ooh, nice. Loxodon means I can go double one drop into Loxodon. Now if they have some instant speed removal they could punish me for this as I won't be able to then uh, convoke Loxodon anymore. Definitely an all-in play, but at least the Loxodon survives a 3 damage Clarion. Alright, I see Defiant Strike, so my opponent must be on a Feather type deck. Well, we've got a nice Boar Presence turn 3 here. And an extra banner to pump the team once more. And there's the Legionnaire. Elspeth also pretty good here. So we can play Banner. Naming whites, and then I could also use Enforcer to tap down Legionnaire, but I think I'm just gonna send everyone. They might block my Eidolon and then use a God's Willing to give Legionnaire protection and kill my Eidolon essentially, but then they're taking a lot of damage. And it's gonna be a somewhat Sprint instead. So they get to eat the Giant Killer. Still take 15. Because if I went with the Enforcer activation and their instant was a God's Willing, then uh, I wouldn't be able to tap down Legionnaire and they would have blocked something else. So that didn't seem uh, great. Yeah, there's a Feather, but my opponent's just too far behind, dead on board essentially. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand I'm not a huge fan of, since we've got double Elspeth, which is a bit clunky when we don't have banner to ramp into it. Especially on only two lands. And then we don't really have a way to pump up these early creatures. So it feels a bit slow. Alright, this is better. The Loxodon makes this hand a lot more exciting. And the Raise the Alarm plays pretty well with it. So... I'm either putting the Formation or a Giant Killer on the bottom. I can go Giant Killer into Raise the Alarm and then turn 3. I can play Giant Killer before convoking. But we have a lot of other 1-drops we could draw. And Formation gives us kind of a unique effect afterwards to pump the team once again. So it's a close decision, but we'll go with this line. Opponent on presumably Mono Reds. Yeah, I'll just play this, as it can block the Fervent Champion. Don't really want to trade off my creatures when we have a Loxodon. Looks like a Red Black Knight instead. Sadly, Bone Crusher kills Giant Killers, so... What we could do is double block Fervent Champion with Raise the Alarm tokens, but then we would lose one of them. But it would kill the Champion, so it's unclear whether... I want to do that here. I don't think so. I really need these tokens to convoke Loxodon. So... Opponent plays the Giants. That's fine. Make some 1-1s. One and drawing another 1-drop is good here, since we can give that a plus 1 counter as well. And then Formation next turn should be good, as the Loxodon will become large enough to attack past the Bone Crusher Giants. Although Lava Coil takes it out. Usually don't see this much interaction from the Red Black Knights deck. But uh, yeah, not in a great spot. Now I can attack with Vigilance and then still use Enforcer to tap uh, down an opposing creature. Which definitely helps, but... Need more... Ways to pump up our creatures here, essentially. So 
So Enforcer can only tap down Giant. They can still Ember Cleave me here, but then I'll be able to kill their Fervent Champion. Uh, thinking if I want to double block it for some reason, I guess it doesn't hurt. In case I have like a Rimrock Knight, I still kill the Fervent Champion this way. Right, no Ember Cleaves, just bumping the Knight of Ammo Legion. Maybe they have another one in hand. Alright, Shock, fair enough. So happy I double blocked, as we still get to kill Fervent Champion. But uh, our hand's not exciting. Can tap down Giants, um, but then I can make a token. So this turn I'm probably just gonna play the Hawk, tap down Giant, then if I draw another land, I can both tap down Giant and Chum Block Knight every turn. So that's kind of our long-term plan. What if I were to attack for six? I mean, that's also a play we can make. Put them to three, and then I can chump knights. I'm not dead. And we present lethal next turn, even through one blocker. So maybe that's better. In this case, I could have also considered just activating castle. That way we can uh, prevent losing to a sorcery speed removal, like another lava coil. Fervent champion... I guess, does that change the math? So they can't attack with everyone. But I'm still forced to chump the Knight of Evolution here. And add another one. Alright, this is gonna be tough. Does Elspeth help us? Elspeth bumping our team doesn't do enough. But I can make two tokens and use Enforcer to tap down Giants. So it's not bad here. I didn't think I want to attack with the 3-3 since they would just trade for Giants, which is the only creature I can tap down at the moment. And it is a good blocker for Fervent Champion. And then next turn there's a chance we can attack for lethal using the pump ability on Elspeth. So if they don't have another blocker, I can pump both 1-1 one -one tokens and we would have 4 lethal threats. With my opponent only having 3 blockers, and yeah, opponent concedes. Yeah, very close game against Rakdos, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. I see a lot of 1-drops and a Loxodon, so I'm in. Facing Healer Shock as well. Yeah, I'll just do the same. Opponent on Mono White Life Gain uh, with Heliod, perhaps. So not quite the same deck. Although we could also be playing Daxos, it's still a fine card for sure. So now what do we want to do? Probably just raise the alarm. Don't really want to trade. And then next turn, if we draw one drop, we can triple one drop into a Loxodon. I'll say it's... Don't really want to trade Hawk when we can make ours into a 2-2 next turn. Another Hawk. Uh, opponent's gaining a lot of life. Banner's not bad. So probably save the banner for next turn. And then for now just uh, empty your hands. Don't think there's a great reason to hold Giant Killer in hand, since Heliod's indestructible. And then we'll do the full Convoke here. Uh, 
and yeah, opponent explodes. A Loxodon too strong. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems pretty decent, especially thanks to the Loxodon. And Raise the Alarm plays very well with it. Don't want a Pegasus turn one, so Hawk makes more sense. Blue green, Paradise Roots. And I guess we'll just double Pegasus. So we've got a nice flying board presence. Alright, so our opponent appears to be the flash deck and not the ramp deck. So don't want to play a ton of stuff into counter spells. Uh, Giant Killer, if we pick up an extra land, can also kill Ambusher, which is a pretty big deal. So I think for now I'm just attacking with my Flyers and then keep a Brazy Alarm. Don't really want to get my Loxodon countered. Opponent did nothing with 4 mana. So maybe a very reactive hand, full of counter spells. Alright, never mind, Cavalier, so I guess they were playing Ramp. So that's a pretty good blocker for my Flyers, but if I can find a third land, we can kill it. Alright, no third land, so probably a Loxodon turn then. And then Enforcer can tap down Cavalier next turn. Could also play Giant Killer, maybe it's still fine, that way if they do somehow deal with one of my tappers, I still have the other one available. And then if we draw a third line, I can also decide to Formation instead. Definitely want to boost up the Flyers. Pumping the tappers is less important, since those have good utility anyways. So we've got a lot of power and toughness in play, all with just uh, two lands in play. Still wouldn't mind the third land, since it also means we can use both uh, tappers in case they have another big blocker. Like another cavalier. Although formation could just be better. Alright, perfect. Yeah, formation's gotta still be better here. Also, I just noticed the Blast Zone from the opponents, which can kill all my 1-drops, so that's no good. Also, if they're taking lethal damage, it's no longer an issue. They might have been able to survive at one life with slightly different blocks, but uh, no complaints here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We've got a nice... Opening hands, one drop, double one drop into Loxodon, although we might be facing blue-white control, in which case our best cards are Unbreakable Formation and Heraldic Banner, as it gives us a way to pump up our creatures without committing more to the board in case of a sweeper. Yeah. If they have a sweeper, we're in trouble. The sand doesn't really beat it. So just gotta hope they don't have it. An absorb would also be pretty effective countering the Loxodon. 
Teferi pluses. That's never a good sign. Can put Teferi to one. Or I can just kill it using the Guide Mother. Maybe that's uh, the play here. And then, do I still play the Guide Mother, or do we hold it in case of a Shatter the Sky here? I guess we'll play it since we have Elspeth as a decent follow-up. But the fact that they plus the fairy makes it more likely for them to have it. Although, who knows, maybe not. Well, Banner's a decent play, although I guess now they're likely to have Absorb in hand, but I just can attack and I don't have to play anything. Seems fine to me. Right, they had a Thirst for Meaning. That's definitely a card that punishes us for respecting a counter spell. But still, we're ahead on board, so maybe Dream Trawler can still stabilize them. Otherwise, we just wait for them to tap out for their sweeper and follow up with our Planeswalker here. But a Dream Trawler could definitely be an issue here, since they're still at 13. It's gonna be Birth instead, maybe keeping up Absorb. Yep. But then I'm just gonna activate Castle. Can be Thassa's intervention for two. Could have also been used as a counter spell. And if they do tap out for Dream Trawler, we can potentially empty our hand. All right, they're just gonna sit back. And then, do I pump my creatures with Elspeth? Doesn't get in a ton of extra damage, but I guess Elspeth is not doing much in play. So might as well. You are braver than you know. They can also make a token with their castle. But then I could play something second main. Could even, uh, escape Elspeth, but yeah, I don't really want them to use their mana on Absorb here. It's gonna be another intervention for three this time. Now they also have enough mana to potentially use a Sweeper and still have a Absorb backup. Just attack with everyone. Nothing really changed. They're gonna make their own token, they still have three mana for absorb. But as it stands, I don't really see a reason to tap out. 
can still use my mana in an efficient way on castle. Now they do have enough mana for Dream Trawler plus Absorb, which could definitely be a problem. It's gonna be a Shatter instead. Shatter the sky, more like Shatter your ears. Alright, so now I kinda need to double spell to get something to resolve, because at the current pace we're not gonna get to deal any additional damage and they're gonna pull ahead. So what card do I want to resolve more than anything else? I guess between Banner and Elspeth. Elspeth might be slightly better, but it's close. So we'll lead with the Banner. So that gets absorbed, and now we get to play Elspeth. Not quite enough mana to also convoke Loxodon, so probably make two tokens and hit for one. And got another blue omen, presumably. Alright, gotta avoid the Dream Trawler, that's kind of the scariest card here. Double top, can be good for us. Elspeth conquers death, well, Elspeth conquers Elspeth. And then five mana left over. Kind Mother is interesting. So can assume they have another Absorb in hand, at least. So I'll probably start by attacking. And then... I could just cast a Loxodon as a 4-4. I could cast Elspeth. Get it Absorb, when it goes back up to 5. Because next turn with uh, the second chapter, it's going to be more difficult to cast non-creature spells as well. Or I can just make a token. Don't really want them gaining three from Absorb, that's kind of the major reason to just do nothing. So I think I'm just going to pass, but uh, it's a close decision. Another Omen. So no token. One top, one bottom. Where are those Dream Trawlers hiding? Upkeep Scry with Omen, that's a good sign. Means that they're pretty desperate. And we might be able to kill past a Dream Trawler on defense just by pumping with Guide Mother and Elspeth, although I guess the second chapter makes that a little bit more difficult. That's gonna be Teferi, sure. This isn't a fight you can win. Well, as I see it, unless they have a Shatter the Sky, they're pretty dead. I have a fight. Can just make another token end of turn. Attack with all. Yeah, no real reason to put anything on the stack. Don't want them gaining life with Absorb. Omen, sure. 
All right, so yeah, sometimes the best place to do nothing and activate Castle Ardenvale. Definitely a great tool against control decks. We were lucky to dodge Dream Trawler, because if at any point they play Dream Trawler and they have like an Absorb to protect it, they could start gaining life and kind of pull ahead, but they never found one. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Can't really keep this one. Even with the basic planes, this would be a mulligan. And this hand is keepable, if unexciting. So we're pretty all in on uh, double Pegasus. Can't really keep Elspeth. Ooh, nice. Loxodon's a good draw. So we'll hit for one. Got a nice air force. And we are up against blue-green ramp. Alright, so let's just uh, empty our hand here. Get the full convoke. And yep. Well, whenever you get to play Loxodon with the full convoke, the game usually ends uh, soon thereafter. So pretty decent deck to complete your daily quests with if you just need to get those quick wins. And then the addition of Elspeth also gives the deck a little bit more late game, so it doesn't necessarily fall to the first sweeper it faces, which is always nice since that's often the weakness of these white aggressive decks. So a very strong deck for best of one might be my highest win rate deck I've played up to date with the new expansion. So definitely give it a try. So that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.